Good day, Junior Tickies. I'm Mrs. Primacom. We're going to look now at the general ledger of a service business, Activity 3. You are provided with the information from Drive Smart Academy for February 2024. The business is owned by Letabu. He employs Leon Filiu. Required, post the cash journals to the general ledger on 29 February 2024. And then question number two, close the account at the end of the month on 29 February 2024. So in this activity, we're not looking yet at opening balances and totals. Now we're moving a step further by just looking at at the end of the month in the general ledger, we need to close off the accounts. So they provided you with the cash receipts journal and the cash payment journal. Just a quick recap. When we're looking at the journals and we're posting from a money column, those are my money columns, it will happen at the end of the month. When we're posting from sundry accounts, it will always happen on the day of the transaction. Your general ledger consists out of the balance sheet account section and the nominal account section. In your balance sheet account section, I would have all my owner's equity assets and liabilities. In my nominal account section, all my income and all my expenses. So there are different ways in which you can approach this activity. You can start by looking at the general ledger account number B1, B2 and so on and then post from the CRJ and the CP CPJ simultaneously or what I'm going to do is I'm going to first focus on the cash receipts journal and then I'm going to move on to the cash payment journal. Starting with the cash receipts journal, a reminder, when we look at the cash receipts journal, your bank will always be debited and the rest will be credited. If you follow this and you post it to the general ledger, you will get this 100% correct. That's the easy part. Just go and study that. So when we look now at the first account, which is account number B1, capital, B1 is just the number in the general ledger. It's in the balance sheet account section. So that's why it's numbered number B1. So we start off by looking at there's no money column for capital. So under sundry accounts, we need to look at where do we find capital. When we're posting it, it should be on the day of the transaction. So we've got capital on the first. So we're going to start with the date, details, bank from the cash receipts journal number two. It is February and it, it was numbered cash receipts journal number two. The amount 250,000. Indicate that you've taken it to account number B1 in the general ledger. So now we need to look at is there another capital contribution by the owner? So if you go down on day 29, the owner contributed 62,500 towards the business as capital contribution. This means we're going to write on the 29th bank CRJ and the amount 62,500. Indicate you've taken it to account number B1. So now that we've posted from the cash receipts journal, our next step is to close off the capital account. So to close this off, it means that we need to total the debit and the credit side. But you can notice now, if you notice, there's nothing on the debit side. In this case, we can only draw a line and we can total it. So at the end of the month, my new balance for capital is 312500 Next, we have bank. So... Bank is account number B5 in the general ledger. From the cash receipts journal, we have to post the total 365,190 to the bank account. You're not going to take each amount individually. From the money columns, 
we always take the end of the month, what was the total money received. So we start with the date, details, total receipts from the cash receipts journal number two and the amount. We're not going to close it off yet because we have to also look at the CPJ and from the CPJ, bank is always going to be credited. The rest is going to be debited. So we can't close this account off yet. What we need to do is indicate that we've taken that to account number B5. Next, we've got fee income. It's an income. Therefore, in the nominal account section, this will be account number N1. At the end of the month, the total fee income was 42,100. Again, have we applied the double entry principle? Yes, because bank is debited, the rest is credited. Our income is going to increase on the credit side. Next, we've got interest on current account. It's an income. So on the day of the transaction, we have to take it to the general ledger, which is on the 26th. The contra account is bank from the cash receipts journal and the amount is 90 rand. Please, 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 please take note. I don't care about who or from who that we receive the money. That's why we've got the journals. This is our focus. Bank and why did the business receive the money? Lastly, We've got rent income. Our income is going to increase on the credit side on the day of the transaction, which is February on the 29th. The contra account, bank, cash receipts journal number two, and the amount 10,500. If you have a look at the cash receipts journal now, you can notice that we have posted everything to the general ledger. Posting from the cash payment journal. From the cash payment journal, bank will always be credited and the rest is debited. We start with drawings, which is balance sheet account number two. There's no money column open for drawings. This means we need to look at sundry accounts to see that the owner take any money for personal use. And if we go down and we look at details, you would notice that on day 27, the owner took money for personal use. So posting now from the cash payment journal, it means that bank would have been credited, account debited, drawings, and my details is bank. That is what we call the contra account. From which journal? From the CPJ and the amount 642. Next, we've got vehicles. It's regarded as a non-current asset, which means if we purchase new vehicles, our assets will increase on the debit side. Under sundry accounts, on day two, there was a purchase, which means that our assets is going to increase. We start with the date on the 2nd of February, 2024. Details Bank, CPJ, 169,900 indicate that you've posted it to account number B3. Next, equipment. It's a non-current asset. On day 13th, we've purchased equipment, details, bank, from the CPJ, amount 14,716. Indicate that you've taken it to account number B4. Bank, we've already done posting from the cash receipts journal. Now, very important. You are not going to open another account to say that you've posted from the CPJ and take it to a different bank account in the general ledger. That defies the purpose. The whole point of a general ledger is a summary of all my journals, which means I'm going to take bank to the same general ledger account, which is account number B5. At the end of the month, we're going to indicate that 
the business made a total payment of 215,554. After we've done this, we're now going to balance this account. And think about it in this way. I want to know, I've received so much money. I've spent an X amount. What is my balance left over? How much money do I've got left over? So that's what we're basically doing now. So in my general ledger, to find out but what is my new balance in the next month, which will be March, we need to balance this account, which means that the debit side must be equal to the credit side. So how do I know now which side to total? We always start with which one or which side has the most, the highest amount. So it's clear that the debit side is more than the credit side. So that's why we're going to write 365,190. We've totaled that. Should be equal to the credit side. And the difference is called my balance carried down. And when we're talking about the difference, it means now I need to do a calculation. Take that 365,190 minus 215,554. This means that I've got a balance left over on March the 1st, which will be my opening balance, the new month, 149,636. Very important. I am not going to write balance next to those figures, next to 365,190. That is a common mistake. Secondly, Many learners go and they write March on March the 1st next to balance carried down. No date. It's the same at the end of last month is my opening balance the new month. So please write, remember to get this correct. These are the common mistakes that learners make. Then we go on to cash float, which is a current asset. On the debit side, we have on the 20th, contra account, bank, CPJ, and the amount 1,200. Indicate that you've taken this to account number B6. Now we move on to the nominal account section. Reminder, in my balance sheet account section, we've got owner's equity. We've covered that. We've got all our assets. We've covered that. There were no liabilities, so now we move on to the nominal account section. The first account that we're going to take to the nominal account section is fuel. It's an expense to the business on the debit side on the last day of the month. Details banked from the CPJ, 2385 and indicate that you've taken it to account number N4. Stationary is an expense to the business at the end of the month, which is the 29th. Details, bank from the CPJ and the total 3,615. Now we've done all the money columns. Now we need to look at but what is left over under sundry accounts. The first account that we've got is trading license. It's an expense. On the debit side, on the day of the transaction, my details, bank, CPJ, number two, and the amount, 4,210. Vehicle license is an expense to the business. On the day of the transaction, which is on the second, we're going to indicate details, bank, from the CPJ, and the amount 272. Bank charges is an expense to the business on the 26th, on the day of the transaction. My details, bank, CPJ, number two, the amount 118. Indicate all the time, once you've posted it to the general ledger, that you've taken it to that specific account. Next, we've got insurance, which is an expense to the business on the debit side. On the day of the transaction, the contract account, bank, 
from which journal, the CPJ and the amount 4,000. Telephone, February 27th. Contra account, bank, CPJ, amount 1,819. And then lastly, we've got salary, which is also an expense to the business. That's why it's in the nominal account section. On the day of the transaction, on the 29th, my contra account bank from the CPJ and the amount 12,500. Now, if you have a look at the cash payment journal, you would notice all the accounts has been posted to the general ledger. We do not do anything with that 209,554. If you have a look now in your general ledger, please take note. These are important pointers. And this is, you can get this 100% correct if you understand that from the CRJ, bank is debited. The rest is credited. From the CPJ, bank is credited. The rest is debited. If I add all my debits and I add all my credits, it should be exactly the same. We have to apply the double entry principle. If we don't, then we're going to find that there's mistakes. Thank you very much. I want to leave you with this quote. Your positive action combined with positive thinking results in success. Have a wonderful day.